Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, it's your boy Peter and today we'll be talking about asthma. Now it's very important we know about this chronic inflammatory disease of the lungs because a lot of people suffer from asthma and even die from asthma if not properly controlled or prevented in the first place. So like I said before, asthma is a chronic inflammatory disease of the airway that causes airway hyperresponsiveness, mucosal edema and mucus production. Now, we should know that there are many triggers uh, for asthma and so many people have different degrees of reaction. So, in other words, it occurs when there is uh, a trigger or an irritant that stimulates the immune system to uh, hyperreact, leading to swelling of the airway and irritation of the mucosal glands in the airway which causes a lot of mucus production. That is the reason why we see a lot of asthmatic patients producing white foamy sputum, you know, like when they try to breathe out, when they try to, 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 to get some air, they are unable to do this because the airways are so swollen that they are not able to adequately uh, expire and because they can't breathe out they can't even have adequate respiration so in other words they 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 it it feels like they are choking it, it it's a really really bad experience so it is characterized by chronic airway inflammation and increased responsiveness that leads to a symptom of wheezing cough chest tightness and dyspnea dyspnea is just difficult in breathing so like in other words there is this chest tightness like they are really really trying to 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 adequately breathe but it's so impossible at that point and that is the asthmatic attack now there are so many triggers so many so many triggers that can result to the asthmatic attack so first of all we must know that it's a disorder of the bronchial airways characterized by a period of reversible bronchospasm it's just like spasm of the bronchial tree these are the airways of the lungs so if they are in uh, spasm it means they are unable to easily relax or to 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 easily dilate to allow enough air in or enough air out so due to this spasm the patient is unable to breathe effectively so um there are so many so many uh, uh triggers like i said before so Triggers include dust, pollen, um, animal fur or animal dander, bugs, cockroaches, uh, anger, stress, smoke, you know, it depends on your kind of lifestyle and, uh, you know, if you live in a place that's highly polluted, the chances are very, very, very high that you would have the increased risk of uh, having an asthmatic attack. We should also know that uh, asthma could be genetic as well. So if uh, someone in the family has suffered from asthma, grandfather, grandmother, you know, whatever you have, it's also very, 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 very likely that um, someone else in the family or the next generation would have the disease as well. So patients with asthma may experience a symptom-free period alternating with acute exacerbations which may last from minutes to hours or days so it depends on the type of exacerbation of asthma so some people may have it occur for days some people may have it occur for just few minutes and some people may just you know also die from it you know that's like the very very serious exacerbation of asthma and like i said before in asthma the airways are much more um, narrow so in other words there is a limited airflow and the muscles of the airway are, are tightened and inflamed in many countries the prevalence of asthma is increasing this increase uh, with its accompanying allergy particularly in children and young adults where this disease may affect up to 15 percent of the population sometimes uh, the younger you are the more likely are you to suffer from asthmatic uh, exacerbations and as you get older probably due to the fact that your body is able to adapt more to the environment the um, incidence of the asthmatic attacks re reduce 
you know sometimes people don't even suffer from the attacks they used to when they were younger like probably they used to have like 10 attacks in a month and then as they get older they may have like just say four or sometimes five it depends on individual it depends on the situation so um asthma is being very common in developed countries probably you know because of the high industrialization and what have you so um 30 million people have asthma and this is expected to rise to 400 million by 2025 the etiology and the risk factor for asthma well allergy chronic exposure to airway irritants like I've said before and uh, you know sometimes the allergies could be seasonal like grass tree weed pollens mold dust animal dander like I said before I'm just getting this info from um, uh, from my source here and well there are so many other things like I said cry stress occupational environment factors such as cold air pollution drug infection drug infection could actually lead to also exacerbations because in infection you have a trigger of the immune response so this could also lead to exacerbation of ulcers oh sorry not of ulcers oh my god of asthma because uh, you are having an active inflammatory uh stage or state here so factors uh even factors that include diets could uh, predispose to also you know some people are allergic to let's say nuts or to eggs and the rest of them and some people who suffer from upper respiratory tract viral infection exercise induced asthma can also have attacks because in exercise i guess the body in the, the the body is in an increased stress state and this causes bronchial spasm sulfur dioxide drugs beta blockers or aspirin which could also cause stomach ulcers from the mistake i made before stomach ulcers as well as um uh as as well as interfering with the anti-inflammatory pathway that leads to a formation of some certain substance called leukotrienes that increases the bronchial spasm so this is the reason why you do not give any patient that is known to suffer from ulcer aspirin because it could predispose to exacerbation of the of the um, asthmatic attack uh, and again i said ulcer so i think i meant to say asthma sorry so don't give someone who who you know has asthma uh aspirin so that it doesn't predispose to excessive asthmatic attacks so uh perfumes and paint can also trigger asthma so now uh, the classification is a complex disorder of conducting airways and it most simply can be classified as the extrinsic form and the intrinsic form. The extrinsic form implies a definite external cause from the environment. Intrinsic form is when no causative agent can be identified, so we do not know. So what is the physiology and the pathophysiology of asthma? How does it happen? I had already explained a little bit of it, so for those who would care to listen, um, well, the exposure to the antigen or the irritant causes an uh, immunoglobulin E stimulation which uh, stimulates the mast cells in the tissues to degranulate. When they degranulate, they, they produce a pro-inflammatory substance called histamine and prostaglandins, bradykinins, and leukotrienes. Remember leukotrienes from aspirin. So aspirin also increases leukotrienes as well. And this is a pro-inflammatory protein. So um, this, all these histamine, prostaglandins, and bradykinins, what they do is they lead to airway hyperresponsiveness. And this irritates the airway, which produces a lot of mucus secretion, non-productive cough, it could lead to more inflammation and bronchospasm, which is when the, bron uh, the, the bronchi, you know, becomes very narrow. And then there is, the symptoms are shortness of breath, wheezing, chest tightness, and peak flow variability. So, these are most of uh, uh, the things that occur, you know, in the pathogenicity of 
asthma. The clinical manifestations, well, principal symptoms that the patient would present with would be wheezing you know when we you know we could hear the wheezing without using a stethoscope for uh, those who we know suffer from asthma but we can't hear uh, the wheezing without using the stethoscope we then use the stethoscope but it's better to use the stethoscope because you hear uh, different sounds and then they tell you what's going on in there in the lungs so principal symptoms are wheezing episodic shortness of breath will have typical symptoms which include recurrent episodes of wheezing chest tightness breathlessness and cough in some instances the cough may be the only symptom the patient not patient my god the patient may just present with cough and you know from the follow-ups from the history from questions from examination then we get to know that yeah this patient is asthmatic so there will be cough with or without mucus production you know you may see this white sputum or you may not the expiration requires the effort and becomes very prolonged because air is trapped in the lungs and this air needs to be released and when the airways are very very um tightened when they are when they are spasmodic it's very hard to let that air out so the patient tries over a long period of time to let that air out it's really not a good experience so as the exacerbation progresses the sweating increased in heart rate and widened pulse pressure may occur along with decreased oxygen in the blood and a central cyanosis this is bluish discolor discoloration and when you see this when you see this it's really bad because the brain needs oxygen and when there is decrease in oxygen it could lead to the coma it could lead to death over some period of time so how do we diagnose this family history environmental occupational history and uh, so many other questions or i uh, or um we could we could do so many other tests and we could get the reason or our clear diagnosis so the occupational history we should know what kind of chemicals you know metal salt wood vegetables dust whatever that uh, are being used at the place of work the medications is the patient or uh or whoever it is <laughs> is the patient on aspirin so we should know or any other medications like beta blockers or um, whatever it is. Uh, some patients who, who are on uh, some antihypertensive medications such as elanapril, captopril, uh, they could also have ulcers because of the increased production of bradykinin. So the industrial chemicals and plastics, biologic enzymes, laundry detergents, animal and insect dust we should know all these things and these are the things that would help us now the physical examination wheezing all over the lungs when we use the stethoscope to listen breathlessness and cough and bluish discoloration of the skin and other things Uh, sorry for the glitch we had there. Something came up and I had to attend to it. So now we are going to be talking about the control uh, management and prevention of asthma. So first of all, uh, we have to control asthma by educating the patient, educating the family, and also trying to take the patient away from as much triggers as possible. And we should also uh, try to um, make sure we have the medications that the patient uh, would use should in case an acute attack of asthma occurs and we should also try to uh, involve vaccination of children against influenza and vac vaccination of adults also against influenza although it does not mean that uh, this would cause a reduction in the occurrence of asthma but influenza because it's uh, also a respiratory infection uh, predisposes to worsening of the attack you know like it could easily predispose an asthmatic patient uh, into uh, an asthmatic attack because you know when you already have the respiratory tract which is irritated already uh, you are going to have exacerbation of asthma but it does not mean that this routine vaccination uh, cures the asthma per se but it has a role to play in the exacerbation uh, so that is one thing we should understand and from everything that has been explained 
uh, it's very clear that uh, the prevention and the, and the management of asthma is much more of uh, a combined effort between family members, the patient, him or herself, uh, uh, the healthcare workers and friends, whatever you you can mention right now. So it's much more of a combined effort of everyone coming together to educate each other and help each other in the prevention and the management of asthma. So uh, when we are talking about the medications used in uh, the treatment and control of asthmatic uh, attacks, we have controller medications of course and they include inhaled glucocorticosteroids leukotriene modifiers long acting inhaled beta 2 agonist in combination with inhaled gl glucocorticoids we have systemic glucocorticosteroids we have theophylline and we have um, the anti immunoglobulin e and we have the chromones what is known as the mast uh, cell stabilizer chromoline sodium so much there but yeah um so um one of the most common uh short acting uh beta adrenergic agonist beta 2 adrenergic agonist which we have which is used in the treatment of acute asthmatic attack includes salbutamol or also known as ventolin inhaler so other drugs uh the glucocorticoids we have uh, beclomethasone budesonide we have budesonide with nebulized inhalation suspension we have uh, cyclosonide we have uh, flunisolide we have fluticasone we have metal metometasone uh, furoate and we have triamcinolone uh, acetonide so these are glucocorticoids uh, so, the reliever medications would include the rapid acting inhaled beta 2 agonist, systemic glucocorticosteroids, we have anticholinergics uh, such as ipratropium uh, and theophylline and short acting beta 2 agonist, all of them I've mentioned them before, I'm just reading this out from some uh, source. So, there are other uh, ways we use in the, uh, in the uh, treatment a plan of asthma and they include the allergen specific immunotherapy uh, but well it's performed by a trained physician uh, it includes specific immunotherapy which should be considered only after strict environmental avoidance and pharmacologic intervention including inhaled glucocorticosteroids have failed to control asthma so that's when we use that so um so far so good uh, this is just a very very basic treatment on uh, asthma and everything and I hope I know the lecture is long but I hope we have been able to learn a, a thing or two about asthma thank you very much and see you next time